All right, gang. It's uh, Tuesday night, right at eight o'clock. So it's time for another episode of Ball Hauling BS, and we got some great stories tonight. Wait for a few of you to get in here and see what happens. I'm uh, coming live from a undisclosed location somewhere. Howdy ho! I don't know who's already tuned in here, so give me a comment. Who's ever here, and we'll uh, we'll get this road on the show here been a interesting the last couple of weeks last week I wasn't able to do the show I uh, was on a bonsai run and really couldn't really couldn't do it had some problems finding some trucks so dear old Jerry ended up <clears throat> kind of no notice in the bonsai and a run out east so it's just part of the deal once in a while we all know how it is in the trucking industry as well as well, there's, there's Blake, there's my buddy and Jeremy Jansen. Blake, I'm still waiting on you to uh, do another one of your great videos there. But anyway, Jeremy's out bouncing around somewhere in the Midwest. Uh, Blake, give me a uh, comment. Let me know where you're at tonight, too. I'm uh, up in eastern Ohio, severe thunderstorms. In the area, go figure, but <clears throat> stop by a few dairies today. That's what i got to kind of continue doing tomorrow. Tyler is not going to be with me tonight. He, uh, he's in the emergency room, not real sure what's going on with him, so he's going to, uh, oh, that's right, you're in Arkansas, down there in Hillbilly Country, down there near uh, Bill Weaver and Company, but anyway, Tyler's not going to uh, be joining me tonight, he's, uh, they're trying to figure out what's going on with him, nothing, nothing life-threatening or anything like that, he just, they decided he better go get himself checked out, so, it's all good, no accidents in the barn, didn't involve cattle. So, anyway, I got to try to fly solo tonight, but, yeah, thanks, Jeremy. That poor horse, he's been, he hasn't moved since I got here. I'm not real sure what's going on here. I need to just take this backdrop with me. <laughs> oh, Blake's at the house and eating. So, yeah, we're uh, <clears throat> super busy right now. I know the livestock world has been kind of hit and miss this uh, Independence Day holiday. You're not going to hear me say the dreaded 4th of July thing, so we're going to refer to it as the Independence Holiday, which is what it's all about today. Now, uh, not to drag politics into it, but I did see something that good old Nike, they're at it again, thanks to that washed up wannabe, tried to be, uh, <laughs> I don't have my uter out with me. Anyway, going back to that washed up quarterback that, you know, obviously has a just hatred for America. Uh, for those of you that aren't aware of it, Nike came out with a new pair of tennis shoes that had the uh, Betsy Ross American flag on the uh, on the heel toe, basically. So uh, they decided to pull that off the shelf because Colin Kaepernick decided that it wasn't really appropriate for him to put his name on something with an American flag and. Uh, the Betsy Ross flag, in his opinion, represented slavery. I mean, these people need to get over it. But, you know, because the Founding Fathers owned slavery and it really wouldn't be appropriate. So, they have pulled those shoes off the shelf. But I can uh, proudly say that I have not had a pair of Nike tennis shoes on my feet since I can remember when. I actually have found myself some American-made tennis shoes for old people. That's right, old people. I said it, for those of you that say it. Uh, Mr. Pound, I'm alright. Dragon tail. Had a long last couple of days. Kind of typical for what we're doing, but anyway, back to the uh, subject there. The, uh, you know, it, Nike can do whatever they want to do. I just can't believe somebody would uh, have that kind of pull just because they're a spokesman that hates America. Nike's biggest biggest consumer is the United States of America so you know keep that in mind that's my opinion I'm going to try to stay out of my opinion too much especially out of politics but I did notice uh, also Washington's hard at it again our elected officials give me uh, give me a little bit of feedback here on what what your opinion is uh, now Washington has decided probably because of probably as a result of uh, Big business as well as big organizations that think they know better about the trucking industry. They've never actually 
operated a truck. Um, they're trying to push it through the Senate, through the Transportation Committee, to uh, put speed limiters back on the big trucks at 65 miles an hour. I saw a uh, post Mr. Mr. Justice put up, uh, one of the numerous sites that he's involved in that I'm also a member of, had a uh, meme that was created uh, that looked like a NAS NASCAR crash at a super speedway, just waiting for the big one, you know, and that's basically what speed limiters did. All they got to do is go to NASCAR and look at what speed limiters have done back in, since 1988, you know, never mind all these trucks out here with the mega fleets that are, that are, uh, that are, uh, speed limited, you know, we all know what that's like to contend with with them, you know, God bless you guys if you're driving for somebody that's got a speed limiter on your truck or your insurance has mandated it, or whatever the case may be, so, you know, I, my, my feeling is what's good for the goose is good for the gander, so, why don't all these self-proclaimed safety experts get out here and put speed limiters on their own personal vehicles? Um, see how much they like it. You know, this is our workplace. We don't tell big business how to uh, how to run their businesses. So, you know, we need to uh, sound off to our elected officials. That's the only way. <laughs> Point well taken. Uh, Jeremy just brought up the fact of funny how they, the people that are pushing... For the speed limiters, I'm going to read this. Funny how they're pushing that when, after the ELD, when in the, all the big companies raised their speed raised their speed limits, speed limiters on all their trucks. You know, it's an interesting point. Prime, JB Swiftner, all of those people, they're all running down the road 75 miles an hour now. So, how ironic that would happen. You know, but yet they want to put speed limiters on us. You know, at some point, at some point, we've got to take our industry back. That's my opinion. Anyway, you know, we need to take our industry back. It's our livelihood. They just keep digging deeper and deeper and deeper. And uh, Bill Weaver brought it brought it up to me. He said, you know, speed limiters. The next thing's going to be rearward facing cameras at the driver, so they can uh, pay attention to what you know, so insurance companies can watch what we're doing. Well, you know what? As we all know. 80, about 80% 80 of the accidents out here on the road that big trucks are involved with. 80% um, of those accidents are caused by passenger vehicles or everything else. So, you know, they, that, there you go. They, they need, need, they want limiters on big trucks. They need it on all vehicles. That's exactly right. I mean, I was coming down out of Michigan today. And, um, you know, they, they want to, they want to single us out with our own safety enforcement our law enforcement, everything else. You know, not only do we have to abide by DOT regulations, but, you know, here we are, we're fighting, just trying to make a living out here. I had a uh, passenger vehicle pass me. I don't know, it was a little piece of trash Chevrolet, go figure. Uh, rolling down the road, the back bumper skirt, bumper cover, whatever you want to call it, that piece of plastic, I was waiting for it to fly off, come through my windshield. You know, what's the problem here? They slammed on their brakes to hit the off-ramp. They'd only been on the... On that particular road, I think it was up there at, oh, for those of you familiar with the Ann Arbor area where M14 splits off to go south on 23, you got that left-hand merge there by the Buffalo Farm. Well, that's where that four-wheeler come down the ramp on my left, only to go a quarter of a mile to hit the next off-ramp. You know, let, let, let's go. Let's, let's get some roads. Let, let, let's get some roads that are designed with some common sense. A left-hand merge to go a half a mile down the road for an off-ramp makes sense to me. Same thing, I was uh, down in central Ohio, headed back to the barn, I had a load of stock on. You know, and those of us out here, you know, all, all of us as drivers, we all take great pride in what we do. I think most of us do. At least the people that follow this that I actually know. You know anybody who's tuned into this deal also, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say y'all take great pride in what you're doing. You know, that's what we're trying to do here. Kind of foster the old brotherhood that's missing and you know, bring back some of the old school values. but. Anyway, you know, I'm rolling down the road, load of cattle on, and they're already, already hot, tired. They've been on their feet for quite a while. Pulled them out of a barn. But anyway, riding along, and um, I'm in a right-hand lane, minding my own business, running a posted speed limit, not bothering anybody. Passenger vehicle. This went, this went on for about 50 miles. Passenger vehicle decides they're going to pass me, got in front of me, brake check me. I backed out of it, jumped back out in the hammer lane, went around them. I go down the road, minding my own business. 
I saw them back behind me. They just kind of laid back. Next thing you know, here they come around me again. They got next to me, and I kid you not, 70 miles an hour going down I-75. Finally, I'd had enough and decided it was time to get off the interstate and get away from that person. Just, just for the, just for the well-being of the animals. Never mind my aggravation and blood pressure. But anyway, said vehicle. It was a black. Uh, it was a little black Chevrolet Cruze hatchback. Woman was driving it. She kept looking over at me and giving me the wall eye, stink eye, whatever you want to call it. And uh, was out in the hammer lane. Started around me and slammed on her brakes in the left-hand lane down to about 35 or 40 miles an hour and got back in behind me. That's when I said, I have got to get myself out of this situation. It just, it's bad news. You know, we're out here trying to make a living for our families, take pride in what we're doing. I mean, I, I was totally aggravated by the time I got down there. I'm not, a, I'm not an advocate of uh, cameras and trucks, but I'm just about ready to put one, at least on the forward-facing dash because of idiots like that. You know, brake checking big trucks for no reason. You know, especially those of us in the livestock industry, uh, you all are familiar with the uh, Fair Oaks Farms story up in Indiana. You got animal protesters inciting, um, or not inciting, but they're uh, causing damage and really giving the livestock industry a bad name as well. You know, everything is so misguided. I also saw in the news this evening there was a uh, there was a news reporter up in Portland, Oregon, was covering was covering a, uh, a protest by one of the anarchist groups that's known for, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use their names because I'm, I'm not gonna give them any credit. They're not worth any kind of credit anyway. But one of the, one of the big anarchist groups out there protesting and uh, here it was a member of the media was beaten as well as a <clears throat> anything they could find they were using as weapons. And on uh, this particular this particular uh, journalist has uh, got hemorrhaging on the brain, I believe they said, severe concussion and everything else. Short-term memory has been destroyed. Um, <clears throat> one of these one of these little thugs decided to wear the fiberglass reinforced gloves and uh, was beating him in the face with it. Law enforcement was standing there watching all this stuff going on. And uh, law enforcement says, well, we're not gonna get involved because it's gonna incite a riot. Come on, since when is it okay for one group to start beating on somebody else, and they weren't even—they weren't even part of a protest or an anti-protest group or anything like that. It was the media in there covering an event, but because it was a—it was a—it looked like it was Oriental, somebody of Oriental descent. I guess they didn't fit the profile of who this particular anarchist group, what they thought should have been there. So you know, they beat on the guy, he ends up in the hospital while while law enforcement just stood around and watched it happen so you know this this is what this country's become it it's absolutely pathetic that's my opinion so i guess tonight's going to be an opinion show jerry's opinion everybody always wants to know what we're thinking well now you're finding out paul marhofer i see you're uh <clears throat> you're tuned in hey big shout out to my buddy eric burton he everybody uh send a little love his way he's sitting in a hospital out in nebraska I believe it was last week or the week before he uh, he got some kind of a eye infection. His eye swelled shut and uh, thought he was healed up and he took a load of cattle out west and lo and behold he's back in the hospital. The problem flared up. Also, um, Eric, just to let you know, another friend of mine, uh, Taylor Barker, I don't know if you met him at the Ohio Truck Show last year. He was hospitalized for about three or four days last week also. He had a cellulitis in one of his eyes, and it was all swelled up, kind of looked like yours, but it, it was some type of cellulitis that got him got him going there. So hopefully hopefully you'll be on the mend here soon, brother. I hate seeing you down like that, you know? Old top hand there. We'll just we'll just call Eric Hero Top Hand tonight. But anyway, everybody send a little love his way. Maybe shoot him a shoot him a uh, instant messaging or something like that you know get well or whatever so kind of kind of sucks especially when you're out there on the road and his family's 12 1300 miles away and he's laid up in a hospital bed by himself in a little town so okay well eric uh, hopefully they'll uh, give you some good antibiotics and at least some, maybe some good painkillers right maybe your dispatcher will not have to uh go get you a drug test or something like that at least you'll have an excuse this week <laughs> Not really, not really.
I shouldn't have said that. Just strike that from the record. So, but anyway, <clears throat> like I said, Tyler's not with me tonight. He's uh, in the ER himself. I'm not going to go into what's going on, but he's okay. No stock got him. He's all in one piece. So, he'll be back next week, hopefully. Heaven only knows what I'll be doing since last week I was on the road during the show and I really couldn't stop. Had an emergency run I needed to make. So, mainly because Hero was in the hospital. No, wait, he doesn't go that way. But anyway, <clears throat> this is going to kind of be an abbreviated show tonight, probably, because the old man is hungry and tired. As you can see, the phone keeps falling down. So, <clears throat> anyway, um, make sure you guys uh, give a big, I want to give a big shout out to our, our one sponsor right now, Davy Crockett Travel Center down there at exit, exit 36 down in, down in, uh, Tennessee exit 36 on I-81 full service TA truck stop. Uh, they also, the Davy Crockett also just got a big award for Papa John's for being the most, I think I saw the most non-traditional pizza, pizza outlet in the United States for Papa John's. So big, uh, big kudos to them for that. Keep up the good work. Also found out that, excuse me, also found out that uh, they've got another construction project on going on down there. Pour some more concrete for some more parking. That way y'all can roll in there and get your Dunkin' Donuts and maybe actually have a parking spot in the middle of the night if, and not have to park at the fuel island. <laughs> yeah, that's a story all into itself, parking in fuel islands. But anyway, uh, and I was supposedly they're working on that being more of an event type of venue as well, putting in a stage and everything else. I know there's some uh, talk of some events going on down there after uh, Matt's next year, so... Kind of stay tuned to that, you know. Like I'm always saying, you know, we can't do a lot of this stuff without sponsors. Without a sponsor, at least. You know, they're they're all about what we're doing here. You know, thank the good Lord they're willing to help us out. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can get some more stuff going here. <clears throat> get some more, uh, get some more uh, entertainment going. Also, for those of you that aren't aware of it, chromasteelradio.com, we've got a... a members only section you're not going to get bombarded with uh, emails or anything like that but I do know that uh, Jack and Dave are working on something at Jack's Chrome Shop once we get that thing all up and going if you're a member of the uh, Chrome and Steel Club you'll be able to get some exclusive members members only type of pricing at Jack's Chrome Shop so kind of keep that in mind plus uh, we're working on probably in August getting some other things going with the uh, with the trucker tail so and I'm sure Hero's got some stories out there that would be a fit to be aired. So, you know, we're going to be asking everybody to uh, kind of give us some input. Get yourself into a, like a quiet room with a great backdrop. Something like that. Kind of like where I'm sitting. You know, and tell your story, your best trucker tale. It doesn't necessarily have to be true. It could be a trucker legend. Whatever. You know, just something. Kind of have a good time. That's where all that kind of content's going to be coming from. So... Anyway, well, Jerry's going to go eat some hot wings and some shrimp and who knows. Uh, Joey, I'm up in eastern Ohio right now. i got some farm visits i got to do, so I'll, uh, I'll be over, over by the TA there in Austin Town. So anyway, if y'all are up in this area or whatever, uh, shoot me an instant message and I'll uh, let you know where I'm at. So anyway, y'all have a great night. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll be back next week, Tuesday night. We'll see whatever else pisses Jerry off. I mean, gets me riled up. I'm sure something will get me going between now and then. So those of you out on the road tonight, be safe. If you're out in the middle of wherever some of this severe weather is, I know there's some rolling through this part of Ohio right now. Looks like there's another storm brewing down in the Gulf of Mexico. So if you're down along the Gulf Coast, make sure you got your raincoat and your waders with you. Um, I don't know what else is going on out west other than I don't think it snowed out there for at least three days. So kind of a monumental deal there and all of you people out there that are doing hay right now good luck i'm glad it's you and not me 95 degrees in humidity this old man's done with that stuff so on that note we're going to uh, sign off for tonight don't forget uh jack and dave's show is on wednesdays and i uh, hope daily dose of hope with the uh, hope savara that's on fridays so make sure you tune into them as well so y'all have a good night be safe if you're out there on the road and those of you that are at home, enjoy your time with your family and uh, be
be safe out there. Look out for the idiots. It is Independence Day weekend, and the amateurs are on the road, not paying any attention to those of us that are professionals. You all be safe and have a good Independence Day. If you've got a long weekend, more power to you, and get to spend time with your family and loved ones. Enjoy it while you can. Have a good night.